Hello, welcome to another beer review with me and my mate Denzel. Now, the beer we got is a bit of a, what can I say? It is a hell of a beer. Um, when I first had this beer, I didn't really think much of it, did we? And um, I've grown to fall in love with it every time I've had it. And on weight beer, it's phenomenal. It's overall 99 and its style is 100. Isn't it, mate? So, I'm going to show you the bottle. I'll have to put you down now, mate. <laughs> he likes to get on, on the action now and again, you know. Hang on, I'll just let him out. Go on. He likes to get in on it. <laughs> right. Now, the beer is... West Mal Triple, lovely jubbly, boys and girls, coming in at a hefty 9.5% ABV. There is the backside, an authentic Trappist product and everything. And it is, this is a class act, this beer. Make no mistake, it's a class act. Um, West Mal, founded in 1836. In Westmail, Belgium. Um, number of employees at this Trappist Brewer. It's got 22 monks and 40, excuse me, secular workers. Um, and it was the first beer to use the modern use term triple. And triple means three grains, um, which are used in the brewing method. Uh, the brewery was remodeled in 1991 and it was then producing 45,000 bowls per year. Now, the, the recipe for this one hasn't changed since 1956, and this one has light peels and malts in for the colour. Styrian Goldings and Saz Hops are used, which surprised me when I, when I read it. <laughs> so, I'm going to read the back, because uh, it's actually in, in, in English. The whole of it's in English, which is because um, I had this on holiday in uh, Spain I think that back was in Dutch or Belgium anyway this clear golden yellow triple is brewed within the walls of a Trappist Abbey on a small scale I don't think it's small scale if it's producing 45,000 bottles um, under the supervision of the monks profit is not the objective the income is used for their daily life to maintain the Abbey and that's what I think all the Trappist beers do. Um, a major share of the profits is donated to charities and this living beer ferments again in the bottle. Store the bottle in an upright position uh, between 8 and 14 degrees. Serve carefully in the glass. Leave the yeast on the bottom of the bottle. It is recommend, recommended that you taste it separately. I'm sorry, I like my yeast in the bottle. I don't care. And as you can see there, that's what it says on the back there. Now there is a big slab of yeast. I've had this before and the yeast has been bigger than that, to be honest. Yeast has been like a small chunk of cheese at the bottom. So I'm very, very much looking forward to this. This is an absolute classic Belgian beer. So let's crack her open. Without further ado, so I've waffled on enough. And there we go. It's CO2 wafting off there. There is the beautiful West Mail crown, which will stay in my collection. And let's see what we get from the beautiful, beautiful breadiness there. Like a fresh bread. Obviously, it's that's the yeast. And there's maybe a hint of bals balsamic kind of vinegar thing running off. I'm picking that up. But it smells like you've had a, you know, imagine going to a bakery. The baker's just pulled that bread out of the oven and it's just, you know, hard crust white bread, just kind of cracked it open. See the steam rise off the bread and you can just smell all that yeast and goodness. That is what this smells like. It smells 
wonderful. It, it does. It's, it's, it's wonderful. So boys and girls, glass, West Mail. I wish I had a West Mail glass. That's another story. I did buy one once, but it broke. I'm not very good with glasses. You've noticed in my beer reviews that I hardly change my glasses because I'm useless with them. So I keep breaking them. So I've just poured it in. Poured everything in. I mean everything in. All the yeast and goodness. I'll call it the goodness. I think it is absolutely beautiful. So as you can see there, glowing golden hue it's glowing you can't see it there it reminds me of the orval i had in appearance with the glow um carbonation it's just trickling away the head is just dissipating down it looks a class act that beer there does look beautiful it really does um when i was in spain i had it on numerous occasions at this bar called the launch I, I, I posted something up when I was out there and I had it really cold and for me I like my beers warm funnily enough very rare that I have a beer dead cold because I think it ruins the flavour um, some people chill them bring them out let them warm up for a while then drink them which is all well and good because you're getting the coldness and you're getting the flavour. But for me, getting a beer of this quality out of the fridge and just serving it to the punters in the bar, big no-no, big no-no for me. I like to have it at the, the temperature it's supposed to be because then you get all the flavour. So, cheers. Hmm. <laughs> Mm. that's beautiful that is beautiful you're getting like a herb garden a little herb garden coming out you're getting that fresh yeasty bread crust flavour you do get the element of its strength on the on the back of the palate at the back end of it um, but it's so beautiful it is it's 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 a class act, <laughs> without a shadow of a doubt. Going again. This guy, I think this might be a quite a long beer with you. And again, having it at this temperature just brings all them beautiful flavours out. It really does. It's smooth. You're getting the grainness there but it's smooth you're getting you're getting all the fresh bread notes you're getting the wheat there's a weakness there hints of herb and it's just beautiful it's it everything is everything in the taste notes knows its own place it, it knows where to come out when you're tasting it it's not like a beer which will give you you know, big on taste notes. This beer just knows all these taste notes. Just know when to, you know, come out of the shadows, and and it's it's wonderful. It really is. Mm. Again, the bread crust is getting a bit stronger as you go in. Um, herb garden is still there the complexity of it is starting to starting to twist and turn with these taste notes everyone's got their own place like i said but it's starting to twist and turn and you're getting you know at the beginning you get the herb a little bit of a herb garden then you get a little bit of a bread crust now the bread crust is coming out herb garden's there you know it's it, the grainness is there it's it's, it's kind of they come up playing with your taste buds because you're picking it up differently as you go in. Um, it reminds me of the Orval in a way because that did it for me. It was like a jigsaw beer. You get all these bits and pieces of these different taste notes just popping out here and there. And as you go down, the jigsaw just comes together and it starts to kind of like, they start to kind of like mesh together. 
on your palate, if that makes sense. It's absolutely glorious and it's one to cherish. So boys and girls, I've walked all along, West Mail Trap is triple, 9.5%, an absolute beautiful beer, an absolute pleasure. So boys and girls, thanks for watching this review. Please subscribe and murder me in the comments. So cheers.